Hello, I'm Steph and this is Pearl My Rescue Robbo. In this video, all about the world of the Robberosity in the world, in detail, I'm going to share the information that I've managed to collate from my research. I really hope you find this useful and interesting. I certainly found it helpful to put together. So let's start with the name itself. Why Robberovsky? They were named after a Russian explorer whose surname was Robberovsky, as on the screen. Robberovsky did not actually discover the species, but because of his contributions to zoology and exploration, including the area Robberovskys are from, the species were named in his honour. Robberovsky led an expedition to Mongolia in 1894, researching fauna and flora and came across this hamster species there. Unfortunately, his writings aren't easily accessible, but it is likely that he described them and provided information about their habitat and any other observations. The Robrovsky belongs to the rodent subfamily Precitus. Within this family, there are various genus or categories, and the Robrovsky is categorised as Phodopus. Phodopus members have a round body shape, short tails and cheek pouches for storage. They live in dry conditions with extreme temperatures. The Robrovsky Robrovsky is, is known as Phodopus Robrovsky. The genus name derives from ancient Greek and there is a bit of mixed information on this but I believe it translates as lightfoot which would make sense as Robrovskis are very fast. Robrovskis are the smallest type of hamster and they range from just over 5 cm to about 8 cm in length, have light brown fur on top and are white underneath. They also have distinctive white patches above their eyes and in their ears whilst the top of their ears are a grey brown. Apparently, Robberoskis in captivity are less vibrant in colour than those in the wild. Domestication and breeding has also seen different colour variations in Robberoskis, such as with Pearl here, who has a white face except for a brown patch over one eye. I plan to go into more detail on colourings in another video. You will also hear Robberoski hamsters referred to as Robos, Dwarf Hamsters or Desert Hamsters. This latter name is because in the wild they do live in deserts. Robberoskis are found mainly in South, Central and North northwestern Mongolia including the Gobi deserts and northern China and they are fewer in number but still found in the Ordos desert in China, East Kazakhstan and Tuva Republic. The Gobi Desert is a vast and diverse region in northern China and southern Mongolia. It features rocky and sandy areas, plains, mountains and occasional oases. The climate is very arid with low rainfall and temperature extremes. The temperatures can be 40 degrees Celsius to minus 40 degrees Celsius. The vegetation is sparse and of course the plants that survive are drought resistant such as shrubs and grasses. Some of the plants include these on the screen. As well as Robrovsky, the wildlife on the screen can also be found. Robrovskis make up about 18% of the diet of long-eared owls in the northwestern China range. Other predators include foxes, weasels, snakes and other owls. Apparently hawks and falcons would also prey on them but due to robos being nocturnal this is less likely. Robberoskis incredibly survive their harsh natural environment due to the way that they are designed. They are nocturnal, most active at night, which helps them to avoid the intense heat of the day and reduces their exposure to predators. They dig burrows, which provide them from protection from extreme temperatures, predators, and weather. They live in family groups, so a pair of Robberoskis and their offspring. This provides social interaction and increased protection. They are good at being efficient in water conservation and obtain hydration from foods they eat such as insects they also store food which is useful for times of limited supply and they are super fast being brilliant runners which means they can search for food quickly and escape from predators more easily the light brown fur on their back and the top of their head is well camouflaged with the sand from an aerial vantage point Obviously the desert has beautiful unpolluted skies and therefore the night can be very bright with moonlight and stars and this can increase the risk of Robberovskis being spotted whilst foraging at night. However, they have increased sensory vigilance and freezing abilities on nights like this and they also hide in, for example, shrubby vegetation. So what do Robberovskis eat in the wild? Robberovskis are adaptable and opportunistic feeders eating seeds that are most abundant and accessible in their area or territory. They eat mainly plant seeds, so 70 to 90% of their diet is made up of plant seeds and they also eat plant leaves and stems and insects such as beetles, earwigs and locusts. Daily they apparently eat 2 gram of plant seeds and their food intake increases in the winter to help with heat production. 
I plan to do a future video going into a lot more detail on the Robrovsky diet, both in the wild and for your Robrovsky at home. Robrovskys burrow and hoard their seeds underground. This can sometimes result in germination and therefore they play a part in seed dispersal, which positively impacts plants. They burrow in loose soil or sand, such as the side of a sand dune, for example. The depth of the sand needs to be one meter or more for proper burrow construction. Vegetation helps with this burrow construction. They create complex burrowing systems which include multiple entrances. This provides safety and escape routes in case of predators or other potential threats. If one entrance is blocked or compromised then the hamster can, can quickly retreat through another exit which will of course increase their chances of survival. This also allows for better airflow within the burrow system and it helps to regulate the temperature and the humidity inside the burrow. As well as this, by having multiple entrances, Robrovsky hamsters can access different areas of their habitat more easily. They can venture out from different points and explore, search for food, gather resources efficiently and bring them back in. Some studies have also shown that having multiple entrances to the burrows allows hamsters to mark their territory more effectively because each entrance serves as a boundary point signaling to other hamsters or potential intruders the presence of an occupied territory. The burrow also has an intricate network of tunnels. These tunnels can extend horizontally, vertically, diagonally, creating a maze-like structure. The tunnels provide the hamster with pathways to navigate and explore their surroundings. Within the burrow there will be designated nesting chamber where the hamster constructs its nest. The nesting chamber is typically located deeper within the burrow system and provides a secure and cozy space for the Roborowski to rest, sleep, raise its young, etc. Roborowski hamsters are known to create storage chambers within their burrows also, and these are used to store food, bedding materials, and other items. So the hamster will gather and stockpile food resources to ensure that they have a readily available food supply during periods of scarcity. Roborowskis can breed up to four times a year. Baby Roborowskis, known as pups, are born helpless and reliant on care from their parents. They have closed ears and eyes until a week after birth. They don't have fur and rely upon huddling with each other and their mother for warmth. After two weeks, they are fully furred and by day 15, they can create their own heat. Lactation ends 18 days after birth and they begin eating dry food 12 days after birth so that they can begin that transition period. The father will often remain in the same burrow network as his family group and therefore by being there help with providing additional material to the food storage. However, males apparently are rarely alone in the nest with the pups and will not contribute any more to the parental care unless extreme environmental conditions or temperature levels require it. In the wild, Roborowskis reach maturity at about three to four months of age. And once they've reached this age, they will likely start to leave their family group in search of mates and to establish their own territories. The exact timing of when they leave can vary depending on factors such as resource availability and population density. And that is it for a deep dive into the world of wild Roborowskis. I hope you found this useful and interesting as did I, pulling it together. If there is anything that I've missed or that you'd like me to go into more detail on, then please do let me know. Thanks so much for watching, for all of your comments on previous videos, and please do subscribe and give this video a like.